Wild Talents, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 39. I shall take an account of mysterious fires from a St. Louis Globe Democrat, December 19th, 1891. I shall go on to quote from a Canadian newspaper, with idea of supporting the Krahart's observations. Reporters, scientists, policemen, spiritualists, all have investigated phenomena of poltergeist goals in ways essentially the same as the way of the Canadian newspaper man, and that has been to pick out whatever agreed with their preconceptions, or with their mental deficiencies, or their social usefulness, and to disregard everything else. According to the story in the Globe Democrat, there had been extraordinary occurrences in the home of Robert Dawson, a farmer, at Thora, near Toronto, Canada. In his household were his wife and an adopted daughter, an English girl, Jenny Bramwell, aged 14. Adopted daughters, with housemaids, are attracting my attention. In these cases, the girl had been ill. She had gone into a trance, and had exclaimed, Look at that! Pointing to a ceiling. The ceiling was a fire. Soon the girl startled Mr. and Mrs. Dawson by pointing to another fire. Next day many fires broke out. As soon as one was extinguished, another started up. While Mrs. Dawson and the girl were sitting, facing the wall, the wallpaper blazed. Jenny Bramwell's dress flamed, and Mrs. Dawson's hands were burned extinguishing the fire. For a week, fires broke out. A kitten flamed. A circumstance that is unlike a particular in the Bedford case is that furniture carried outside and set in the yard did not burn. An account in the Toronto Globe, November 9th, was by a reporter who was a person of usefulness. He told of the charred patches of wallpaper, which looked as if a lighted lamp had been held to the places. Conditions were miserable. All furniture had been moved to the yard. The girl had been sent back to the orphan asylum from which she had been adopted because the fires had been attributed to her. With her departure, phenomena had stopped. The reporter described her as a half-witted girl who had walked about, setting things afire. He was doubtful as to what to think of the reported flaming of a kitten with a few hairs on its back slightly cinched. But the chief difficulty was to explain the fire on the ceiling and the fires on the walls. I'll not experiment, but I assume that I could flip matches all day at a wall and not set wallpaper fire. The reporter asked Mrs. Dawson whether the girl had any knowledge of chemistry. According to him, the answer was that this little girl, aged 14, who had been brought up in an orphan asylum, was well versed in the rudiments of the science. Basing upon this outcome of his investigations, and forgetting that he had called the well-versed, little chemist half-witted, or being more sophisticated than I seem to think, and seeing no inconsistency between scientific knowledge and imbecility, the useful reporter then needed only several data more to solve the mystery. He inquired in the town, and learned that the well-versed and half-witted little chemist was also an incorrigible little thief. He went to the drugstore, and learned that several times a girl had been sent there on errands. The mystery was solved. The girl had stolen some chemical, which she applied to various parts of Dawson's house.